yesterday with a lock that was probably 150 years old. And, and she was so unaware of what she had there and, and how rare it was. I quoted her a cheap price only because I wanted to do the job. She thought it was too much money. Her husband calls me up and says, we're gonna buy a new one. I said, how are you gonna buy him? Somebody will come over, screw it all up and make it look like shit. The gift that I have, okay, from, from the creator or whatever the hell it is, we don't know, in my hands. As long as I could see something and hold it in my hands, I can do it. I pick up these keys about once a week. Usually get about 100 pounds, 150 pounds of keys. And, uh, but they gotta be sorted out. I got a lot of different guys who collect scrap, you know, and, and, I, and I went and I gave the word out. I said, listen, I'll pay you more for the keys than you can get at the scrap yard. Three or four years ago, I, I made a collage on this door with all these keys, you know? I figured, okay, I'll just do it and I like it, you know? If nobody else likes it, it's fine. So people went bananas over this door, man. They went fucking crazy. So I said, I'd like to make a chair out of keys. So I made the chair out of keys. People loved that even more than the door. Then I said, ah, I'm gonna cover the fucking building in keys. You learn techniques, you master them, but then as you progress, you actually find something that's much more unique, much more personal. In art, I think every, everyone ultimately is looking for truth. And everyone wants to get as close to the bone as, as possible. A locksmith and an artist is very similar. I mean, the more you do, the more you see, the more you draw. You know, you, I mean, somebody could teach you how to draw. And then after that, it's just, you know, you gotta do a lot of practice. Being a good safe cracker is all about experience. My second wife had a good analogy, man. She said when she was a kid growing up, she had this cat. She loved this cat so much, and every now and then this cat would disappear. It wouldn't come back for a week and she'd be so worried about it. And this cat would come back and be all tattered up and beaten up, and she'd have to nurse it back to health, and then the cat would go back out again. She says, that's you. On the one hand, it speaks to his lifelong profession, being a locksmith. And, you know, certainly when you look at all these myriad keys sort of swirling about uh, in, in, the, you know, in this composition, you, you think of all the keys that perhaps he's made and all of the interactions that he's had with, with people. You know, his art relates to his profession, but also in, in some broader sense to a, a greater story about New York. As time goes by, it will be a Greenwich Village, certainly, but a New York City and an American landmark. Everybody's in jobs that they don't like. They're in relationships they don't like. And they're just afraid to make a move. And I didn't raise my kids because I had to. It was because I wanted to. All these obligations I had, I did them because I wanted to, not because the uh, government was going to tell me I had to do it, or morality, or the police was going to tell me. We didn't do it because I wanted to do it.